Alexa Liaco. It's been two years and it's still, we're still talking about it. Melissa Williams remembers the night her husband Robert was arrested in front of her and their two daughters like it was yesterday. They had no reason to arrest me. Like, I, I, I still can't figure out why other than they said I looked like somebody. Two Detroit police officers met Robert at his front door coming home from work. They told him he was a suspect in a crime and took him to jail. I'm like, well, y'all got the wrong person. Robert was detained for 30 hours. When police questioned him, they showed him photos of a theft suspect. Their facial recognition technology matched to Robert's driver's license, but it wasn't Robert. So he turns over the last one and says, so I guess the computer got it wrong. And I'm like, well, yeah, the computer got it wrong because that's not me and that's not me either. Robert worked with the ACLU and his case was dismissed. But I still had to go to court on this as if I had a felony charge for stealing. This is exactly what we had been uh, warning about uh, for for years and, and months preceding that, that this type of thing was happening. There have been two other widely known cases of wrongful arrests due to facial recognition technology in the United States. Lawyer Phil Mayer with the ACLU worries this is just the start. So when we let the technology take the first steps, let the technology lead us, we, we make mistakes. A 2018 study by MIT found some facial classification software misidentified people of color at higher rates than white individuals. We would like them to not use it because <laughs> it's it's a flawed tool. With privacy and discrimination concerns, regulations are starting to become more common. At least seven states and nearly two dozen cities have limited government use of the technology, something activist Connor Swatling would like to see more. With law enforcement specifically, we believe it has to be held to a higher standard. And right now the technology is not in such a place where we feel that standard has been met. Other activists say limiting facial recognition now is a safety risk. Last year, Virginia banned the use of facial recognition for law enforcement, but this year, that ban was overturned. There's been hundreds of thousands of investigations that have been aided by uh, the use of this technology. It doesn't make sense to completely ban the technology but it makes more sense to establish parameters for it. I believe this is truly a bipartisan issue. Whether you are more concerned about governmental overreach or racial injustice, this issue impacts you. For the Williams family, the impact took an emotional toll they're still working through. They just hope changes are made before another family endures their struggle. If it happened to me, it can happen to anybody. Maybe one day it will be useful, but at the current state, no, I'm not behind it. I'm Alexa Liaco. The race continues next.